Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Monday Weekly Market Update webinar with myself, David Madden, Market Analyst here at CMC Markets. Today's date is Monday the 27th of November and the time has just gone 12.15pm. Uh, we'll be kicking off the webinar in less than one minute's time and as always what we will be doing is we'll be leaving the risk warning slides on the screen here in front of you to have a quick read through uh, before we actually proceed with the webinar itself. It's a matter, matter of standard procedure and it is something that will keep our compliance department very, very happy. It's all very straightforward. It just effectively states that anything that is covered in the webinar today is my own personal views and comments and opinions and should not be construed as explicit uh, trading and or investment advice. It's all fairly straightforward stuff. If you just want to have a read of that, I'll leave it on the screen. Uh, a few seconds per slide for you guys to have a read over and then after that we'll be then kicking on with the webinar. So it'll be the usual rundown, we'll have a quick talk, quick chat about what, what has gone on uh, in terms of the news over the last few days. We'll also I'll be looking quickly at the week ahead, the economic and corporate calendar, of what's potentially going to be the big movers of the, uh, of the week in terms of news events and corporate events. And then finally, we'll then be looking at the, we spend the bulk of the webinar looking at the major uh, markets, a few indices, a few commodities, a few currency pairs, keeping an eye on those and looking at the, at the potential uh, price action that we could see in the next few trading days. So if we take a look uh, at how things have been kind of fared off at, uh, at this weekend, it's been a relatively uh, slow news session. Uh, I suppose the big news of the, of the last few days has been that the Social Democratic Party, the SPD in Germany, stated that they were at least open to the idea of a grand coalition with the Christian Democratic Union Party, which is headed by Chancellor Angela Merkel. Uh, the meeting, meeting is, is, is to take place on Thursday, and it would seem a bit more kind of optimistic that it, it has certain reforms, ish, ish, certain reforms are, are, are met uh, and in relation to the SPD's agenda. They will be they will be open to the idea of going into a grand coalition with the largest party, the CDU in Germany, and that has helped a bit of political stability along, and that has had a somewhat uh, investor uh, investor sentiment. We also had some had some, uh, some 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 uh, some kind of sentiment numbers out from China overnight uh, in relation to the kind of steel in industry and also and also some of the sales managers figures. Uh, it's sort of a kind of a front runner to the PMI, the purchasing manufacturing numbers, which are later, which are due out later this week. Uh, but the num but the indication did did state uh, that there were, that there were some kind of slow slowdown or kind of c concerns about the state of the economy. China is obviously doing really well, but the the rate of the, the rate of economic growth in China is slowing down, and that is no secret. So we have seen some of the mining companies like Banana Resources and Antofagasta. Uh, which are which are, which are exposed to China via, via metals uh, trade lower on the on the session. Um, taking a look now at what's what's, what's ahead at the big events of the week. If you go to our website here, cmcmarkets.com, and under news and analysis, click on the news analysis section. Uh, some of the articles that we, that we write every single day here on the market analyst team get posted up. Others will be posted into Insight, which I'll show you later on. Under the section uh, Weekly Outlook, if you filter by third option down, you then bring up the, the Week Ahead uh, article, which gives you a, a snapshot of the major uh, economic and corporate events uh, of the week. So this Week Ahead, uh, you can see here, it's in the, in the headline, we have an OPEC meeting, and also we have UK Bank, UK bank stress tests. Uh, taking, uh, coming up tomorrow is the details of the UK bank stress test. Uh, Wednesday, we have third quarter GDP throughout the United States. On Thursday, we have a couple of corporate updates. Green King, the pub chain operator here in the UK, they have numbers, they have numbers coming out, uh, and as do the Daily Mail and General Trust on Thursday. And then Friday, we get the last of our uh, manufacturing PMI numbers because quite a few of the, we have, we have quite a few major countries reporting their PMI numbers uh, throughout, the week, throughout the week, but we get the last of it uh, on, on Friday. Scrolling down to your corporate calendar, uh, we can see here it's been a it's been a, going to be a reasonably quiet week uh, in terms of numbers coming out. We have pets at home in the UK. Our first half numbers coming out tomorrow. We also have a, a full year figures from Tops Tiles tomorrow. Moving further afield to Wednesday, having a scroll down, I think, I think at Wednesday's numbers, uh, we have court, we have a half year figures coming out from Pennon Group here in the UK and also Telford Homes. 
Uh, what's kind of interesting to watch out for retail stock in the United States, Tiffany Co. have third quarter numbers out. Scrolling down on the Thursday, as I mentioned, Daily Mail and General Trust have numbers out, as the Green, as the Green King. Uh, but we also have numbers, numbers coming out from Express in the United States and Barnes & Noble on Thursday. Pay point of numbers out, uh, half, half your numbers out on Thursday from the UK. And uh, scrolling down, it's, it's like we don't have two uh, particularly popular companies reporting their numbers out on Friday from the United States. So I'll have a look now at some of the major markets. It'll be the usual rundown for myself. What we're going to do is talk about uh, the, the we'll talk about um, very briefly the corporate calendar on our website. If you go to Market Pulse, fourth option down, Market Calendar. We touched on some of some of the major economic indicators coming out, but, uh, but, but this this will actually is a bit more detailed. It gives you the, the it gives you the actual once it's announced. It gives you the forecast and it gives you the previous. This way of showcasing you some of the some of some so where some of the information is available on our website. So tomorrow the big one to watch out for is going to be confidence, consumer confidence numbers, the confidence board numbers out of the United States at 3 p.m. Moving on to Wednesday, we have CPI numbers coming out of Germany uh, around lunchtime on Wednesday. We also have the gasoline figures in relation to U.S. U.S. crude oil stockpiles. We have the OPEC meeting, which is going to be on Thursday. It's going to be which could provide quite a bit of volatility for the energy market. In the early hours of Thursday, we have these we have the manufacturing PMI numbers coming out of China overnight. We also have house price numbers coming out of the UK uh, early doors on Thursday morning. We also have other indicators throughout the day, uh, uh, for example, Spanish GDP, and we also have unemployment numbers coming out of Germany uh, early Thursday morning. Uh, we also have uh, personal cons consumption and spending from the United States at lunchtime on Thursday, and we have Japanese CPI in the very late hours of Thursday night. And uh, then pushing on to Friday, Friday the 1st of December, can, where, can you, where has the year gone? Can you believe we're approaching December already? Uh, taking a look at the economic indicators coming out on Friday, I guess, like I mentioned already, we have quite a few PMI manufacturing reports uh, from all the major Eurozone countries. We also have from the UK, uh, we also have from the United States, and we have, quite a, and we have um, growth, both growth and unemployment numbers coming out of Canada at lunchtime too. Uh, just, just just to let you know, some of the some of the economic indicators, some, some of the reports that we write here at CMC Markets get put up put on the news and analysis section on our website. Others will, will be in the insights section, which is if you click on Market Pulse, um, second option down is insights. So some of the written articles that we do and uh, bulletins in relation to economic releases get put up put up on the insights. And the chart forum, which is also under Market Pulse, is the third option down. So it'll be a quick snapshot of a particular chart. And within a few other characters, we'll discuss uh, so some of the potential price action we could see on a particular chart. And speaking of price action, I'll now get into the uh, the main body of the webinar and look at and look at some of the major markets and uh, discuss what we potentially could see in the next few days. So, in early November, we did have quite a large sell-off uh, in global equities, and as you can see here, the FTSE 100 uh, had a fairly decent sell-off. But for the last week or so, we have been kind of grinding higher on, on FTSE 100. Um, it hasn't be, been really running away with itself. We've, we've had a fairly clear and concise um, series of lower, sorry, higher lows. So notice how, how the market, each time it creates a low, it's actually higher than the previous low. So the market's nudging higher. We're just north of, of the 7,400 level. And if what you can see here is on the MACD histogram, on the MACD uh, indicator, we can see that negative momentum is clearly declining. So that the setting pressure that was in play in early November is, is, uh, is declining, and the market actually it has been pushing higher. So we're resting fairly comfortably on the 30 moving average in around 7,400. If you can hold north of that, and if we, uh, we, we, could, we could see a, a continuation of the bounce back. So should we, could we... Uh, see a, a bounce back, a continuation of the bounce back. The first level the market to take out is this high here from, from late November at 7,460. And if you go beyond that, we could see go by heading back up towards 7,500. And then beyond that, we could be looking up towards, because we saw a lot of consolidation in around this area here at 7,561. And then, then north of that, we'd be looking towards 7,600. But if the market doesn't uh, if, this, if this bounce back manages to run out of steam, I will see the market turning over on itself again. What we could do is we, we may, may find support 
the downside here and the, in, in the mid-November low of 7,350. And then if you go below that, we, we could be heading back towards 7,300 or even the late September low of 7,233. As always, uh, I'll go to the major indices, major commodities and currencies. Are there any markets that you haven't, uh, any markets that you haven't, that I haven't covered, please feel free to just type in the chat box. Uh, I said if you I sent a few messages to, to the chat box here, Neuron, uh, and if you want me to cover any particular markets, just stick them in there, and I'll be happy to do so. Similar enough pattern to the the Germany 30, the DAX, whereby the market came off quite aggressively in November. In early November, but it has been pushing, has been grinding higher here. Um, similar with the FTSE 100, uh, the Germany 30 is creating high, higher lows, so the market isn't pushing, is pushing higher here. We can see what once was quite high, was was quite substantial negative momentum is is in a fairly clear decline. So the selling pressure is waning, and all at the same time, uh, the market is ever so slightly kind of grinding higher. It's not running away with itself, but it's certainly creating higher lows. So, so we could see a continuation of this positive move. And if, for, and if you do see a continuation of this positive move, the next level to watch out for would be the kind of mid-November high, the late November high of 13,211. And then if you go beyond that, we'd be looking at this level here where, where, where the gap was created at 13,316. And a move beyond that could send us up to the all-time high of 13,534. So it would appear that the selling pressure is running out of steam, and we could look, we could see a this bounce back turning into another retesting of the all-time high on the DAX. But um, for the time being, the 50-day moving average just in around this area here, sort of at 13,000 uh, even is acting as support for now. But if you do see a move south of that, we could be heading back to the kind of mid-November lows of 12,847, this area here. And if we go south of that, we could be heading back down towards just north of 12,700, this price action here. The American markets are in, uh, are in uh, much better shape than their, uh, than their European counterparts. We'll take a look now at the, the Dow Jones. It hasn't caught up with the likes of the S&P and the Nasdaq 100 where it's, where it's been kind of continuing to kind of post record highs but it's really within within the earshot of it it's, it's an it's an eyesight of it it's, it's quite close so the Dow Jones the US 30 has been trading in a fairly narrow range here the market has been pushing higher so we have seen markets make move towards the recent record highs at the same time we are seeing a fairly clear and concise decline in negative momentum so the MACD histogram the negative, the negative component is in decline, so selling pressure is running out. We're approaching uh, the recent all-time, we're, we're approaching uh, the, the record high, so we could be looked to, the, the Dow Jones could be looking to play catch-up with the S&P 500 and actually go on to set a series of further record highs as the S&P has been doing. So should we continue to move north from here, we could be looking up towards 12, 000, sorry, 23,700, 800, 900, so on and so forth. So but if we do see any pullbacks in the Dow Jones, in the US 30, we may see fresh buyers enter the fold because let, let's, if you look over the last few months, buying on the dip has been a very popular strategy with some traders. So if we do see any pullbacks in the Dow Jones, we may see some buying support in around here uh, at 23,400 or even as low down here, just south of 20, of, uh, just in around 23,250 in this price area here. The S&P 500 chart looks fairly similar, where, whereby it's, uh, it's like the, the, uh, the one kind of concise difference has been that the, the S&P 500 has actually been going on to, to hit record highs uh, only, only, um, only uh, at the, at last Friday. So as you can see here, it's been a, a fairly solid upper trend, constantly uh, ratcheting up uh, fresh record highs al along here. So, so the sentiment is clearly bullish and, 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 the, and, the, and the bias is clearly to the upside. You notice here how even when the market did correct, it did see a bit of a pullback and a bit of a market correction, we saw a steady increase in negative momentum. And then the kind of warning sign was that, say that the kind of the selling pressure was coming to an end. As the market started to creep higher, we saw a very distinct decline in negative momentum. And that was actually swung ever so slightly to the positive side. So we could be in line for another 
um, rejuvenation of the of the bullish sentiment that we've seen basically for the last number of months on the S and P five on the S and P five hundred. So we could be heading up towards. 2610 20 30 and so on and so forth and if you do see any uh, any any declines in the uh, in the S&P 500 we, we may see fresh buyers enter the fold like with the Dow Jones because that let's face it of the last number of months buying at the pullback has been a popular strategy for traders on the S&P 500 so if we do see any pullbacks we may find support in around here at 2,591 or 2,580 or down as low as 2,570 or perhaps even if we see a deep correction it could even go as low as the 50 day moving average this price here at 2,560 so while we've had quite a decent and considerable push higher on the US indices uh, what we've had uh, on gold has actually been quite boring to be honest um, we see the market kind of grind a bit higher, but it hasn't really. It has failed to kind of make a kind of a decent attack on the 1300 level. Um, the broad uh, movement of gold throughout 2017. This is here. This is us here, and kind of almost nearly about a year ago, from the lows to kind of mid mid December 2016, gold has broadly been been pushing higher. Hit a few multi multi month highs. It was kind of range bound between the kind of around 12 90. Kind of low 1200s went on here in september to hit a 13 month high and has come off come off that uh, that high here and we're, it looks like we're back in the kind of general slow and steady kind of grind to the upside it's, it's been a fairly uninteresting market for the last number of weeks but what you can clearly clearly see here is a, a slight gradient to the upside it's been a fairly fairly clear and concise series of lower highs here even though I haven't really seen an obvious series of higher highs, but the, the, the bias would appear that it's to the upside. The market really hasn't kind of failed to have a decent test on 1300, but what we, what we have been, been sure of is uh, we have seen a series of higher highs. So, so we have seen, bu have seen buyers step in whenever the market does move lower. So the next level to watch out, out for on gold, we're currently trading around 12.49. 1300 psychological level keep an eye out for that one and if you do take out 1300 we're, not, we're going to be looking towards possibly the mid-october high of 1306 1307 and then north of that we could be looking towards this this price action here we saw some consolidation in around here at 1316 and then beyond 1316 bit of consolidation price action around here at 1334 and if that's taken out then, then the uh, the level of 1358, which is the 13 month high, would then uh, potentially come into play. But if we do see any drifting lower in gold, we may find support at the 100 day moving average, this price here, which comes into play at 1283. It has been kind of almost like a, like a magnet to the metal over the past few weeks. Gold really hasn't moved a whole lot, a whole lot further away from the 100 day moving average recently. So. But if we do see a drop below 12.85, we could be then looking towards support at 12.70. This kind of mid-November low here. And then if we go below 12.70, we could head back towards the October low of 12.61. But notice how the market is grinding higher, a series of higher lows. Also, we're seeing a fairly, even though the price action isn't ratcheting up majorly, but we are seeing a steady build in positive momentum. So the market is grinding higher and uh, the momentum is with the buyers we'll take a look now at what's going on in the old markets um, as I mentioned on Thursday we have the OPEC meeting for the last few weeks now we've, we've, we've been hearing more and more chatter that uh, OPEC are looking to extend their their coordinated production cut beyond the end of 20 of March 2018 potentially the end of to, to potentially all of 2018 so Pushing it out a further nine months uh, as a way of actually keeping keeping um, keeping a a cap on the global supply. So taking a look, oh, that's actually the copper chart. My apologies. I'll bring up um, Brent crude now. I start off by looking at the the weekly chart on Brent, and then zoom in to the daily chart. So th there is talk that that OPEC are going to extend the the production. Uh, caught deadline from the end of March 2018 out until by the sounds of it the end of say December 2018 so a full nine month extension that's been the market chatter you could you could argue that a lot of that is already actually priced in and but it depends on what it was actually delivered on the day itself and it depends if they could do it give any get a gift any forward guidance towards 2019 so 
What we saw here um, on the WTI, on the Brent crude chart, a few weeks ago had managed to make a decisive burst uh, north of the 200 week moving average, which is obviously a big, uh, cycle, big, a big important indicator and a barometer of how strong the market is. So it moved north of the, of the 200 week moving average. Then the following week we saw a correction, it drifted back below it. Now we're kind of firmly above the 200 week moving average here. So as a broad indicator, if we're north of the 200 week moving average, that's a positive sign. Um, and then I'll zoom in now. And as you can see here, for the last few weeks and months, from, uh, from June here, for the last five months, there's been a steady increase in positive momentum on, on the weekly chart here. You could argue that we're seeing a bit of a tapering off, so we might see a bit of a pullback. So if we do see a pullback on Brent, we could see a head back, drift back towards the 200 week moving average in around $62 a barrel, or perhaps even down towards 61 But the trend for the last six months or five months has been to the upside. And if you look at it here on a um, on a daily chart, this is from the lows of June. It's a very clear and concise upward trend, higher highs and higher lows. Your classic definition of an upward trend. This is this is the, this is when the market here hit its 200 week moving average, and then of course we saw the market uh, put um, drift lower as a bit of profit taking set in, and now we're seeing the market push higher again. As we're seeing the market push higher. We're also seeing a fairly obvious decline in negative momentum. So we could be heading back up, up towards $65 a barrel or, or $66 uh, to the upside. And then beyond that, the kind of obviously the big $70 bucks will, then be, will then become the big uh, level to watch out for. But but if you do see any pullbacks in, uh, in, in, uh, in Brent crude oil, this area here uh, has provided decent support recently. So we could switch to be in around the kind of 61.50 level. So 62, 61.50, 61, these areas we may find support in. And if, even if we go south of that, we could be looking heading back towards the kind of the September high of $59, which $59 at 51 cents, which coincides with, with the 50 day moving average, averages at the moment. Taking a look now at WTI. I'll start off with the with the, uh, with the weekly chart. So WTI played a bit of catch up, um, but it managed to get there. So WTI is actually now above its 200 week moving average. So it's obviously a, a big kind of important barometer of of, uh, of market sentiment being north of that particular metric. So we're currently trading at just north of 58 dollars a barrel. So 60 bucks a barrel is maybe the big kind of psychological number to keep an eye out for north of this because the uh, the 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 direction and the trend for the last six months since the June low has been clearly to the upside. Like with Brent, it's been a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. Although oh, the oil market is quite choppy, so just be careful in relation to where you put your stop losses because you know if you're trading if you're trading on short term derivatives, you need to get the direction and the timing right. Uh, so keep an eye out of where you potentially see pullbacks he heading to. So. This is, the market has been pushing higher here. We can see that on the, that the MACD indicator, the histogram, it swung to, to the, the momentum has swung from negative territory to positive territory. So the pressure and, and the momentum, momentum is with the bulls. If we do see any pullbacks, we could see some pullbacks in around here, in around the kind of 50, $57 a barrel, $56, $56 a barrel region, but um, only, a, a, only quite a large correction would potentially take us below this area here at $54.63. I'll go up now to the, uh, some, some of the currency pairs. Take a look now at the euro versus the US dollar. So the euro versus the, versus the dollar has got quite a, quite a decent run the, the last few weeks. We, we saw a fairly... We saw a very tepid, you know, poor US dollar last week, which helped the euro no ends. Not to mention, we saw some good economic indicators out of Germany uh, and also France last week. So we've seen the euro push up here. The euro, we haven't seen the euro at this level here. It's currently north of 119. We haven't seen it north of 119 since late September. So we're talking basically a two-month high uh, for the euro versus the US dollar. So as you can see, as the market was pushing higher here, we saw a fairly steady increase in positive momentum. So the bulls. Uh, the, 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 the momentum is with the bulls, so we could see a continuation of this positive move on the euro. So we're currently at 119.36. The next big psychological that I'm going to look out for the upside is going to be the 120 level. And then north of 120, we look into the, to the September high of 120.92. And as you can see yourself in the last few weeks and within the, within the wider trend of 2017, kind of finding the dip 
has been a popular strategy on the euro versus the US dollar. So if you do see any pullbacks, we may find support in around this price here, uh, which comes to the which is the mid October high of 118.79. And then below that, even down as low as potentially kind of 118, we could see some support in around there, or even down where the um, the 50 and the 100-day moving average seem to kind of cross over at 117.65. We're looking now at the pound versus the US dollar, and the pound has also had a quite a decent run versus the greenback, especially in light of the weak US dollar over the last few weeks. I'll start off with the big picture from the from the May, from the March lows, draw that through the August low. You can clearly see here that this trend line was tested quite a few times and we did see a few punctures of it. But broadly speaking, the market, uh, the pound uh, managed to kind of always, uh, whenever it dipped below that, that, that particular trend line, it managed to get back above it. We can see here that the, the, um, only, the, only on Friday we hit a level on the pound versus the US dollar, not seen since, well, since, since very, very early October. So we're talking about seven weeks highs on the pound versus the US dollar. It's above the, 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 the trend line support. It's hitting multi-week highs. We can see here that this push higher here in price is confirmed by the steady increase in positive momentum. So when the price and the momentum are moving in the same direction, you can be more confident the move is going to last. If you see a divergence in the two, that's when you that, that could be an early warning sign that there might be a bit of a turnaround in the price action. But while the market's pushing higher, let's take a look to the upside. Uh, we could see potentially this area active resistance Quite a lot, lot of um, consolidation in price action in around here from um, the kind of middle of September, which come into play in around the kind of 134.52, 134.50 region in around here. And then if you go north of that, uh, some traders could be looking towards the September high of 136.59. And to the downside, if you do get any, any moves lower, this or the further trend line support comes into play, and, and now it probably comes into play in around the kind of 132 region. So even if you go as low as, even if you stay north of 130, I suspect we could see a continuation of the wider upper trend on the pound versus the, the greenback to stay in place. I'll just do a couple more charts now. I'll do euro sterling and then I'll do euro dollar and then look to wrap it up. Uh, so we can see here is it hasn't been quite as clear or concise, but the euro has certainly gained quite a bit over the over the um, of against the pound over the last few months. We have been looking, we've been trading in a, a tightish range through the, through the month of November on the euro versus the, the, versus the British pound. But we can see here that the, whereas we have on occasion seen the 100 day moving average act as resistance, it's still pretty much trying to, trying to crack that level. And the 100 day moving average is pretty much in around these areas here, in around the 0 spot 89.45 region. So if you do make it a size of break north of that and take out 0 spot 90, we could then be looking towards the, 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 this this price area here from from the middle of September in at uh, zero spot ninety forty nine, and then if you go beyond that, we're looking towards ninety one and uh, zero spot nine one and zero spot nine one sixty in around here. As you can see, as the market was kind of grinding higher here, you did manage to see a kind of pickup in positive momentum. So, like I said, when the momentum and the price are heading in the same direction, you can be more confident the move will last. Uh, so if you do see any moves to the downside, we may uh, we may see the 50-day moving average act as support again, and that will be in that zero spot 88.78, and then below that um, we could see it, we could see the 100-day moving average act as support in a zero spot 79.89. This will be the uh, the last chart of the day's session. Uh, it's going to cover now the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. So looking at the dollar versus the Japanese yen, we can see here that since early November, there's been a, quite a considerable move to the downside. And it took off the mid-October low, so it could even be a sign that we're kind of heading, heading south again on the dollar versus the, 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 the Japanese yen. Um, it... One thing I can say is that as the market was pushing lower here, there's a steady increase in negative momentum, but negative momentum has cooled somewhat here, where this area here at 111 could be decided whether the market bounces off that level and actually continues in the wider trend that it's been in since September, or whether if 111 is taken out, we could see a, an increase in, uh, in negative momentum and we could see an increase in selling pressure. I might look, look for us to head back down towards 110, 
the mid-September low, this price here at 109.55. And if we go south of that, the next really big level to watch out for will be the September low down here in at 107.32. But we seem to be, over the last few trading sessions, uh, in quite a narrow trading range in around here and the, uh, on the dollar versus the yen. So if we do move higher, the first kind of level we need to take out to the upside will be the 200-day moving average in at 111 spot 71. And then beyond that, the 112 region will be, will be, the, will be the level to keep an eye on. And should we, should we move north of 112? Uh, the 50-day moving average, which previously provided support in, in, uh, in mid-November, may act as resistance uh, this time around, should the market move higher. And the, 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 that price area comes into play in at 112.80, spot 81. Right, now that I've covered um, the major, major markets, I'll very quickly show you other seminars and webinars that we're holding. So if you go to our website, and under the, the Learn section, where you found the details for this webinar, uh, I'll give you, give you details of other events that are hosted by ourselves and you can, that, that, that you're uh, feel free to come along to and sign up for. So later tonight uh, at 7 p.m. London time, UK time, we have the we have a webinar, Trade Development Program Part 4, the live trading Q&A. On Wednesday, the 29th of November, we have this, one, this webinar here at 7 p.m. UK time, a guide to modern technical analysis. And then next Monday, the 4th of December, uh, I'll be back in the hot seat at, at 12.15. Uh, I do appreciate your patience. And um, also, it is worth pointing out that a, a recording of this webinar is going to be tweeted out by myself. And it's also going to be put on the Insight section of our website. And Insight is under Market Pulse. Second option down is where Insights, Market Insights is. And that will be, that'll be available on our website within the next hour or so. Uh, from all of us here at CMC Markets, thank you for your patience. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.